tail extras. Ooh. Ooh. Yes, new unlocks. Oh, look, extras down here. part of the beach where McMurphy told me the shipwrecks were. I'm looking for clues as to what happened here, in case it's useful to my work on the antidote. I don't really know what I'm looking for. I feel a bit like a kid with my bucket and spade digging in the sand. Captain Corn having fun? Voice startles me. I'm familiar, but I can't help it. who it belongs to. So I'm on my guard. Who's that? Show yourself. I have nothing to hide, but I am naturally wary of your intentions. Will you give me your word of honor that you mean me no harm? Um, yes. You have my word of honor. I feel like a Cub Scout. I take you at your word, and I'm happy to make your acquaintance. Captain Horn. I see a sleek gray cat has stepped from behind the wreckage and is bow, bow, bowing oh, bowing in front of me. I feel obliged to bow back at him. I'm pleased to meet you, Captain. Where do you live? In the wreckage, I mean? I think I live elsewhere. But I've been here for a long time. I'm trying to find my crew. I realize he's wearing a vintage naval uniform. I'm not an expert on military history, but I guess it's from the 1800s. Ah, Captain, did you arrive on one of these ships? Yes. I captained the Kitty's Desire. Uh, but I fear I've let my men down. Where are they? I have been searching. He seems quite disoriented. What happened? Looks like you had a bit of a run-in. So, what, like, are these cats, like, immortal? Run-in? My eye. Malici maliciously set on and attacked more. This disgrace of a vessel is a pirate ship. <laughs> Be careful who you're calling names, Karn. They might just take umbrage, and then the cat really will have gotten your tongue. Another cat appeared. A petite, long-haired tabby, also dressed in some kind of costume. Identify yourself, stranger. A new cat has turned to me. Hello, my name is Maureen, and this is Captain. I know who he is, I... All right. What are you doing in my domain, Maureen? State your business. I was just doing... I was just digging around, not sure what for. I certainly don't know it was your domain. It's not. This is unclaimed land as yet. I dispute that the ownership belongs to this rogue and cutthroat. Hang on, hang on. Let's not get overexcited. Who's who's a rogue? That's not a nice thing to say about a fellow cat. Do not put me in the same sentence as that mercenary near do well. She is a pirate. Oh, wow. I've been giving her like... I'm not going to change it, so fuck that. Calm yourself, corny. Right now, I'm more interested in what this human is digging for. Oh, nothing in particular. Are you really a pirate? I refuse to discuss my business with a company of a pompous goody two paws. If you wish to speak to me, you'll need to see me alone. Fuck that cat. And off she walks with her tail in the air. Thank goodness that vermin's left us. However, she does make a point. If you wish to discover what really happened here, you're going to have to make a choice. Her story or mine. Oh, this is a hard decision to make. Which kitty's tale shall I hear? I mean, I already have an idea of uh, Libby's backstory because we got that. We got, we got to read that journal. But it might not be either, so, like, I'm really interested. Uh, let's do. Let's do cor Corn Story. Well, as Captain Libby seems to have disappeared, my choice is obvious. Would you tell me your story, Captain Corn? Wise choice. In any event, take a seat, as if you will. My story is a long one. Oh, I do need to be back in time for tea. Then 
I shall hasten to tell you. It began in a merchant run for the Kitty Fisher sh uh, Shipping Co. I'd been contacted to the company for some time, and I'd done this particular run many times before. There's nothing in it that's very taxing for a captain of my experience, particularly manned with a crew to the standard standard of men I personally handpicked for sailing the Kitty's design. Although the route was long, it was also straightforward. I never anticipated problems. <clears throat> However, this trip proved to be out of the ordinary in so many ways. The weather was against us from the start. Freak storms have been plaguing. Oh, I'm listening to the meows. Freak storms have been plaguing <clears throat> a normally peaceful sea, and several ships have reported being taken quite far off their usual trajectory. This day was proving to be a blighter. The men were doing everything by the book, as I would have expected from my crew. Tying down and battening the hatches, there was no point in being on, on deck, so I decided to write my log in my cabin. First I knew of anything irregular, it was an almighty crash that sent us reeling. I gathered myself and made my way to the deck, being buffeted and blown so that I needed to hold on tight to whatever was available. Sam, my cabin boy, was the first crew member I came by. I could barely hear him above the sound of the storm. Pirates, Captain! Pirates! I could hardly believe my ears. We haven't had pirates in this route in all my time as captain. Far too audacious a challenge. My first thought was that they must be as much at the mercy of the storm as we. But that assumption was quickly dispelled by the shout. Pirates boarding! Pirates boarding! It was unthinkable. I needed to gain control of the situation as quickly as possible. I drew my musket and I emerged on deck to the awful sight of human ver vermin scurrying about in the rain and, cra and crashing waves to overwhelming my crew and get the upper hand. I could see the vessel listing, per listing perilously close to ours, and then on the, on the bridge, the unmistakable figure of that she-devil. Captain Libby? The Witch of the Waves, Captain Libby indeed. I stood my ground, holding on to the main mast and pointing my musket in her direction. I could not hear her laughter for the din of the storm, but I saw her head thrown back and her wild hair fly in the wind as she grabbed the cutlass at her hip and raised it high into the air in defiance. It was at that moment that I saw the wall of water rise up and behind her, as though summoned by her. It was the last thing I saw. There was a terrible sound, as though the very gates of hell were torn open, struck to the dead, and blackness fell. Wow, that was... Oh, that's what made the whole, the huge hole in the stern. Yes, we came apart on impact, and the whole ship was a goner. Yeah. I don't know how long it, we had been in the water. When I regained consciousness, the waters were calmer, and we were drifting on a piece of wood towards a wall of black rock. Sam seemed to be hold, holding me as a floating. Oh, as I floated in the water. Captain, you're alive. I didn't dare hope. What happened, boy? We crashed. The pirate scum rammed into us with such force that I fear all are dead but us. As I, got, as I gathered my thoughts, I realized I could hear others moaning and crying out all around us. We're not alone, Sam. Listen, there are others. Help me up. And between us, we managed to get into our makeshift raft. I set up an looked around, taking stock on the utter carnage, but there were men, many of them, clinging to the water as we floated, keeping themselves from sinking down into the watery graves. I tried to make myself heard as far as possible. Men, we need to stay together. Try to hold on to each other and stop yourselves from drifting. I am going to lead us towards the land. We have to get to those rocks. Use whatever you can paddle. 
follow me. You're a hero, Captain. Yes, it was laborious, but we made progress and eventually reached what appeared to be an opening in the rocks. As we stumbled to land, the gravity of our plight became more apparent. Help the wounded, pull whatever you can from the water. Anything may prove useful. We don't know what's ahead. What about the pirates? We were all in it together. There was no place here for contention. Revival is a great leveler. So we helped each other as best we could. We found our resting place where you live now. Base camp? But of course, there were no cozy tents or fire pits to keep us warm. It must have been terrifying. One tries not to indulge one's own fears when looking out for one's men. We managed to make a rudimentary camp for ourselves in surprisingly short time. Considering the condition of the men, each did what they could, tending to the wounded, building fires. Food was, prim food was primary consideration. If the men didn't eat, we would very quickly deteriorate. So hunting parties were put together and sent out to scout for food sources. One made up of pirate scum and the other made of my best men. Sadly, neither gang was successful, bringing only unfamiliar to tubers and plants that were boiled up to make a soup. I knew we could not continue for long. Living on grass and seaweed, men need meat. I became ever more determined over the coming days, sending out scouting parties and pairs throughout the day and night. Each told me the same story, no animal life at all, except for cats. Oh, this is gonna go with the, uh, with yeah, what I read. Okay, we already knew that there was a population of very ordinary-looking domestic cats living all over the island. But as the men forged further afield, they came back with tales of a very different species of species of feline on the furthest end of the island. The elders. These were larger than usual and very hostile to those who came close. I, it wasn't long before the pirates began trapping cats and treating them as a, as a food source. Some of the men were even bitten and scratched. It was unthinkable for an officer or a gentleman, of course, but these barbarians didn't seem to care what went to their bellies. They, they had paid the price, of course, and quickly, and quite quickly, too. The sickness ran through their ranks so expensive. Bent so expendently, yeah, expendently, that their numbers were all halved within days. Most flung themselves from the rocks to their death to escape the hideous plague the cats visited upon them. Some wandered off to the jungle, never to be seen again. I remember one lad, a pirate named Jim, lost his wits and began drawing strange pictures in the sand of half men, half cats. He tried to escape, launching out to, uh, to sea, strapped to an empty bar barrel. No doubt he perished along with the others. Captain, if you refuse to eat the cats, how is it that you are um, the way you are? I don't remember too much of my of the transition, nor anything else apart from what I've told you. I know I was bitten, but I can't remember how. Do you know what happened to me? He looks so small and vulnerable. I just want to cuddle him, but I maintain a respectful de demeanor. I suppose you were overwhelmed eventually. My understanding so far is that the process is different in each person. Depending on the amount of DNA that was transferred, the outcome, however, seems always to be the same. You turn into a cat. Yes, I see. Of course. I know that. But what of my men? Why can I not remember? I'm guessing that you and Captain Libby have stayed close? Yes, we seem forever to be tied in spite of our differences. And you must continue to talk about what happened in your story? The woman never stops telling me. So that memory stayed alive. Anything you haven't deliberately kept conscious fades over time until you lose it completely. I see. I'm sorry, Captain. 
Well then, I suppose I ought to go find that wretched hag of a cat and listen to her story yet again. <clears throat> Tell each other often. Keep it alive. I promise. Help is coming. I'm working on it. I need to go now, but I will be back soon. These cats are older than shit. Breaks my heart to leave these two, but I have to get back to camp before the professor starts looking for me. Libby's story this time. While I'm answering Captain Corn, I turned to chase after a long haired tabby, a real life pirate. Who could pass the opportunity to interview a swashbuckling freebooter? I almost said boner. Excuse me, Miss Pirate. As we reach the forest, the cat stops in her tracks and turns to face me. She straightens herself up onto her hind legs and takes an elaborate bow. <clears throat> Lady Elizabeth H. Rutherford. <laughs> this is a very, uh, this, this pirate smoked a lot. That's why she got that very deep voice. I'm taken aback by her sudden transformation from savage to lady. My subordinates call me captain. My buck buckos call me lady. She returns to all fours. Please, I'm pleased to meet you, captain. It truly is an honor. Enough with the nice talk, human. You want to hear my story? Well, you best sit down. It's not for the faint heart. I do as I'm told and sit on the muddy ground. I suppose the first thing you'll want to know is how a refined, a refined young lady of a noble birth became a buccaneer with such, fierce, with such a fearsome reputation. I want to hear everything. That is, if you're happy to tell me. It will make a change talking to another other than that old windbag. Captain Corn? The very same. It was the likes of him that my poor brave mother escaped from. With a babe in her arms, only the and only the clothes on her back. She threw her lot in with a pickaroon rather than stay in their cheating cowardly world. A pickaroon. A pirate! Not just any old pirate, mind you. My father was the wildest sea wolf of them all. Feared and respected and loved. Your father was... I call him that because he raised me on his own. My mother brought me in. Me to him. When I was not yet a year old. And yet he took me in without question because of his love for her. Never once did he treat me as less than... As if I was his natural child. I never knew my blood father, but I heard enough to know he was the cruelest, meanest beast. Worse by far than any I've danced with on account. He was a peer of the realm and was a daddy purse strings pay uh, was on daddy purse strings payroll for getting the bills passed and really should have had more scrutiny. There were a law unto themselves, those men, hog swaggers, the lot of them. Well, like I digress, my father brought me up as a water rat proper. By the time I was ten, there was nothing I didn't know about sailing. By sixteen, I was running my own ship, the catfish, and taking men on no prey, no pay runs. Huh. I was good, if, if I do say so myself, and I gained a reputation for bringing home the bounty. I had ambitions, too. I dreamed of being as rich as Daddy, purse strings, himself, before my 21st birthday. So how did you end up here, Captain? We've been going through a lean patch. Not just, a, not just us, as it was the same all over. All men were hungry. All were still thirsty. You can't deprive a pirate of his grog for long without the mutiny rambling through the, rank, the ranks. And one of my boys puts forward the proposal that we try our luck taking on a, the desire. A kitty fisher merchant ship. My first reaction was to Stonewall. Normally, we wouldn't touch a fisher. The two well rigged and too well armed. So you 
can't outrun them, and you can't overpower them. However, desperate times call for desperate measures, and I decided to think it through a bit more. Fishers are big and strong, but their captains are clueless. As soon as they go off their designated routes, get them out in the open water, and they're lost as lambs. That's the trouble with rich folk. They can afford to buy the best vessels, but they don't know how to save them. Now, I ain't got no problems with Daddy Person. In spite of the company he keeps, but his ships are well stocked. My men were starved. So it seems only fair we take from the fat and give to the lean. Oh, I put my hand in the air to signify I have a question. Captain Luda gives me an exasperated look. What are you waving at? Sorry, but I keep but you keep mentioning Daddy. Who is he? Who is who is Daddy Purse Strings? Gods. Only the fattest cat of them all. That <laughs> landlubber had the coin to change the world. And what did he do? He invested in creams and powders. Oh, this sounds familiar. He was a cosmetics tycoon? He was an old fool with too much money and not enough sense. Do you want to sit around and talk about things that don't matter, or do you want to hear the rest of my story? I'm sorry, please continue. So, me and Jim, that's my cabin man, drew up charts and made a plan. The idea was to track the desire from a safe distance without being spotted. And then when we reached the midway point, furth west, furth, furth west, furthest, words, well, <laughs> furthest from the, either way, try to badger her into leaving her path. We use these tactics many times, tire them out, then try pushing them, pushing off course. If the weather turns bad, so much the better for us. The gods were really on our side, on our, hmm, the gods were really on our side on rain day. The heights of summer should have meant calm seas all the way, but no, thick black clouds loomed over us, darkened by a minute. Ooh, that was a good good effect. By the time we were chasing the desire, I could barely see my own hand in front of my face. I realized the storm had now become our enemy too. Life on the seas has taught me well about the weather, weather. But this was something else. The sea raged in a lightning flash, and we knew our vessel could not take this battery. The only way for us to survive would be abandon the catfish and call a truce with the merchants. We had to board the design. We downed our weapons and raised our arms above our heads. But out comes that coward corn. The musket raised, ready to blow us all away. He knew we He knew we were we was surrendering. But he came at us anyway. His arrogance scuttled at us all. His crew all as well as mine. In the ensuing rumpus, we faced Davy Jones' locker. I don't know what happened next. I woke up on land with no idea how long I'd been there. But it didn't take long to see what had gone from bad situation to a far worse one. We managed somehow to work together, us and the Toffs, to get as many men as possible out of the water and into that dry land. We salvaged all we could and made our camps as we saw fit. Them on higher ground, us by the water's edge, on the beach here. Oh god, no pirate wants to be too far away from the sea for too long. Not that it helped us in the end. This place was cursed. There were things that weren't right. I mean the cats. They were starving. They were starving, the men. They tried to hunt, but there was nothing here. We never saw a bird or bear of any kind of beast, other than them cats. I tried my best to keep them from the inevitable. I forged around and made a banner of, a banner of stews and soups from the plants, and tubers I gathered. They 
I became obsessed with meat. All I could do in the end was watch in horror as the nightmare engulfed us all. Only a few of us didn't succumb. Wouldn't take part in the savagery. Even so, we weren't spared. All it took was one scratch, one small swipe of the claw, and the change began. As the sun shines upon as the sun shines upon her tiny cat face, it glistens, and I can see she's crying. I'm not sure how to handle this. Ought I comfort her? She is a fearless pirate, after all, even though right now she looks like a little lost cat. I'm so sorry for what happened to you and your crew, Captain. I'm working very hard to put things right. Be patient. I'll give you my word. I give you my word that all be restored to how it should be. Like, though, if she restores them, will they be like a hundred something years old? I need to go. She's skulking off in the forest, but before she disappears, she half turns. Maybe you can call me. Oh, we friends. We made a friend. 